If you want to start growing an email list in MailChimp, you'll need to know how to create a sign up form. It really is very easy. So in this tutorial, we're going to set up a sign up form together so that you can confidently create one by yourself the next time. I'm also going to show you how to add those crucial GDPR marketing permissions so that you don't breach data regulations. And finally, once you've created your sign up form, I'll show you how easy it is to start generating leads by sharing your sign up form on social media. If you're new here, it's great to see you. I'm Nikki Pasquier. I'm a Canva certified creative and a HubSpot email marketer. I'm really passionate about helping small business owners and startups like you successfully market your brands online using some of the best digital marketing tips, tricks and tools. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and just click that bell notification so that you're one of the first to know when I upload a new video. And now let's hop over to my MailChimp account and get started. Starting on our MailChimp uh, desktop, go to the left hand side toolbar and go down until you find audiences. Click on audiences, the next menu along, go down until you find sign up forms. Now select the list you want to add the sign up form to from the drop down menu right here. Scrolling down a little, find the form builder and click on select. And this is the sign up form builder. At the top of your form, there are three tabs, build it, design it and translate it. And we're going to really focus on these first two tabs here. So let's start off by building our form. Starting right at the top, this is the name of your list, MailChimp Training in my case. You can keep it as a text heading. You can edit your text by clicking on this little tab here. You can remove it altogether and instead use an image graphic. I'm going to select a graphic which I've just created in Canva and it's this one right here. So I'm going to click on it to select it and I'm going to click on insert. That's the heading sorted. So now let's scroll down a little bit and hover our mouse in this little box here. And this is where you're going to add a personal message to your prospective subscribers. So hover your mouse over the box and click on the little edit button right here. And this opens up a dialog box and you have all the tools here in the toolbar, which you'll probably be familiar with if you've used Word documents, for instance. So you've got your text editing buttons right here. It's entirely up to you what sort of message you write here, but you'll probably want to welcome prospective subscribers, let them know that they're in the right place and confirm again exactly why they're subscribing to your list. Once you've done that, you'll probably want to include some instructions just so that your prospects know exactly what to expect next. If you have a double opt-in, which I strongly advise you do, you might want to include a quick note to tell subscribers to look out for a further email from you. Finish off with your signature and then save and close the form. Next, you want to choose what kind of information you want to collect from your subscribers by adding some form fields. You'll find all the form fields on the right hand side of your screen. An email address form field is added by default. The next most obvious form field is to add a subscriber's first name. You can ensure that subscribers leave certain information by making form fields a required form field. To do this, click on the form field once to select it, scroll up to the top and on the right hand side, just place a tick in the box next to where it says required field. Then make sure you save the field. And here's a pro tip for you. At this stage, only ask for as much information as you really need. The more information you request from subscribers at this stage, the more likely they are to lose patience and click away. So I'm going to delete the last name form field. I'm also going to delete the address form field. I'm going to keep the phone number form field, but rather than delete it, because I might need it at some stage, I'm going to keep it hidden 
which essentially means that your subscribers don't see this box here. I'm going to delete this field here because I don't need it. Now for those GDPR marketing permissions. It's really not that bad at all. Ideally, you should have set these up when you created your list. You would have found them underneath the list settings and it's here you would have set them up. If you haven't done them, don't worry, because we can do them right now. I'm going to hover my mouse over the GDPR permissions form field and I'm going to just click on it once to select it. Scroll up to the top. I'm just going to relabel this as GDPR marketing permissions, just to be absolutely clear what it is. The description box is fine as it is. And now I'm going to add in my options. Now, I'm not going to advise you about this. Again, everything you need to know about this, you'll find right here. Just scroll right down to the bottom of the page until you come to GDPR and email and you'll find all the information you need here. But for my purposes, I'm going to put MailChimp tips and then I'm going to click on add an option. I'm going to put Canva tips and tricks and I'm going to add one more option training and promoted offers. Now you need to require subscribers to tick at least one of these options since otherwise you'll not be able to correspond with subscribers at all. So I'm just gonna tick this box here. The legal box is very general, it can stay as it is. Now all you need to do is click on save fields. And there you can see your GDPR marketing permissions have been saved right here. Now we're gonna scroll back up to the top. We've done all the boring stuff, so now we're gonna start the fun bit and we're gonna start designing our form by clicking on the Design It tab. Underneath that, you'll find four different tabs, Page, Body, Forms and Referral Badge. So let's start by designing the page. And underneath that tab, you'll find three more tabs, background, header, and outer wrapper. I've clicked on background, and now I can change the background color of my form by clicking my mouse in this box right here. It's quite handy at this point to have your brand color hex codes available, so you can just copy and paste them into the various sections. And there, it turns a rather horrible bright pink. Now for the header section, if you recall, I swapped the text for a graphic, but if you kept a text header, here is the place you can edit your text by changing the font, the font size, and the margins. You'll notice that MailChimp shows you which area you're editing by surrounding it with a thin red line. The next tab is the body tab. And again, you can just click on each of these sub tabs to change various aspects of your form. So for instance, if I click on default text, I can change the text within this form here by just clicking on each of these drop down menus. Change the font size, change the color, any padding around the text, and a link style if you want to change the color of any links that you include, such as this one here. Again, just click your cursor within this box and either copy and paste a brand color or you can move this little button around to select whatever color you'd like. Next tab along is the Forms tab. And this is quite fun actually because you can change the style of your subscribe button right at the bottom of your form right here. I'm going to paste in my brand pink color here. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the form, you'll see it's changed to the lovely pink color. Now, as you've just seen, as I hovered my mouse over the button, it changed color. And I'd quite like to change the gray to my brand orange. So scrolling back up to the top, I'm going to click on buttons hovered and paste in my brand orange hex code. Let's see what that looks like. There you go. You can see it changes color as soon as I hover my mouse over it. And also you can change the color of your text as well by scrolling back up to the top of your form and placing your mouse in this box right here. So you could change it to black text if you wanted to. So that looks like, there you go. Let's change the text color as well. 
I'll leave you to go through each of these other tabs because they're all fairly self-explanatory as to what you need to do. If you recall, I mentioned about making certain form fields required if you wanted subscribers to leave certain information. A required form will have a tiny asterisk next to it, so you can change the colour of the asterisk right here. So I'm going to again make this my brand pink colour. And once you've done that, make sure you turn the visibility button to show so that the little asterisk is visible next to your form fields. And finally, and possibly the most important step of all, is to share a link to your sign-up form on social media so that you could start attracting subscribers to your list. So at the top of your form builder, you'll find a subheading called Sign Up Form URL, and this is the link that you want to copy and paste on your social media channels. You can either click these buttons here, which will take you across to Facebook and Twitter, or you can even click this QR link to create a QR code. And here's my sign up form on Twitter with a little graphic made in Canva. That is all there is to creating a MailChimp sign up form. In the next video, I'll show you how to complete the entire sign up process. I'll end by showing you how to share a file, such as an ebook, for instance, with your new subscribers in the final welcome email. That's all coming up next time, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.